All right, back with another video here. Um, just something basic on um, a little bit of corruption, I believe, corruption in the calendar months that we're in. I lived um, all my life not knowing that I was actually not in the correct month, or I should say in the correct numerical month for the year I was in. A lot of people probably don't know this, but um, um, in 1750 in England, um, they made January 1st, the or January, the month of January, the first month of the year, of the calendar year. Um, however, the calendar is based on solar, solar cycles. And in ancient times, uh, before 1750, all the way back through Rome, uh, Sumer, Mesopotamia, Egypt, um, they followed the the sun. And so in nature, uh, March is actually the first month of the year. And um, most people don't really know that. And I'm kind of going to go over a basic way in which I can sort of prove that. Actually, I can definitely prove that. Um, it's pretty simple. But first we'll go over um, just the, the equinoxes and solstices. June 21st is the summer solstice. Um, and December 21st is the winter solstice. Um, the 21st of March and the 21st of September are the equal equinox. Equinox means equal night. So on these these days, there's the there's 12 months of, of light and 12 months of darkness. Um, this is the shortest day of the year, December 21st. This is the longest day of the year, uh, the height of summer, June 21st. These four points are called the cardinal points, the cardinal directions. Um, they're sacred days, sacred solar days in which... Um, the sun's power has a greater effect on the life, the life of the planet, all the plants, animals, and the minds of man. Um, these are sacred days because, uh, and they're called cardinal in Latin because in Latin, cardi means the hinge. So they're referring to the days in which the doors open for the solar light to come in. Um, and we'll just go really quickly through um, the zodiacal signs. Uh, you have 360 degrees divided into 12 equal pie slices. Uh, each zodiacal slice is 30 degrees of the, uh, the celestial sky. So um, I'll read this real quick, uh, just off the internet. I think this is a, a Wikipedia. Uh, it just talks about March as, uh, uh, as being the first month of the year. Um, I don't know if you can see this here. I'll read it aloud to you. The name of March comes from the Latin Martius, uh, the first month of the earliest Roman calendar. It was named for Mars, the Roman god of war, who was also regarded as the guardian of agriculture and an ancestor to the Roman people through his sons Romulus and Remus. His month, Martius, was the beginning of the season for both farming and warfare and the festivals held in his honor during during this month, it was mirrored. Other festivals were mirrored in October. Martius, Martius, Martius. Sorry, I don't know how to say that. Remained the first month of the Roman calendar year, perhaps as late as one one five three BC. So there you have it. Um, it was called Martius after the planet Mars, but it was also called Primo in Latin. Um, and Primo means means first. Primo number one. Um, and this is where we get the word for in Italian or Latin for primavera, which is the uh, the first blossom, the first fruits, which always occurred um, just after March 21st, which is the the spring equinox. And the reason being is because as the sun goes through the sky, it pops over this uh, equator or equinox into the sign of Aries. And um, that marks the end of winter and the beginning of spring. And this is why spring is called Primavera in Italian. Um, and April, actually in, uh, in Latin, refers to, uh, to the hinge again. Um, abril and abierto in Spanish mean uh, to open, to open the door. So April is just... Um, the root for to open and this is when Aries uh, arises and that's actually the word Aries actually um, if you just move the I and the E around Aries it just means to arise 
And this is when the sun pops over the equinox and arises um, for the first fruits and for spring. Uh, this is also where we get the the word for um, Ra. Ra is just backwards in there. A-R is also R-A, Ra, which is the sun god, one of the sun gods uh, or aspects of the sun god uh, of ancient Egypt. Ra was uh, one of the, when the sun was at its height and its power. So midday would be, be Ra. Um, would be right here, June 21st. So um, March is called Primo, and the reason why I can prove that is uh, as you go around the calendar um, and you come come over to, let's say, September, well, what does sept mean in Latin? Uh, a septenary is a group of seven. So September means seven. However, in the West, since 1750, we've been taught that September is the ninth uh, month of the year. However, it's not. It's the seventh. And this is why it's been named September for thousands of years. So if we go on further, we come after September is October. Well, what does oct mean? What is an octave? An octave is a group of eight. So in a musical scale, you, you have uh, seven notes that make up eight. So eight, eight steps. That's an octave. So October we've been taught our whole lives is the 10th month of the year. But it's not the 10th month of the year, it's actually referring to eight. As we go on, Nove uh, is where we get the number nine. So November refers to nine. Um, and then a really easy one, um, when you have a, a the word deca, like a dodecahedron, refers to 10. Um, dece in Latin is 10, so December We've been taught as the 12th month of the year, but it's not. It's the 10th month of the year because according to nature and the way the sun actually goes, um, or we, we revolve around the sun and its light shines across our planet as we rotate and orbit, we create this solar cross, these solstices and these equinoxes. And um, this solar cross is the cross of Christianity it's also the, the Ankh, the Egyptian Ankh. It's the Native American medicine wheel. It's the Celtic cross. Um, it's actually just about every cross you've ever seen in your life comes from this. So January is actually the 11th month. February is actually the last month of the year. And then back to March being primo. So there you have it. It's written right in the words of the month. Um, all right, now I'm gonna move on uh, to one couple other little points here. Um, back to the word Ra. Ra is the sun god in Egypt, Amun-Ra. Um, and this is actually where modern astronomers get their term for, uh, it's an, like an anagram for right, ascension. So in astronomy, Ra is right ascension. And when they say, hey, you know, look at this, uh, this star and it's in this quadrant, it will be 22 degrees right ascension in this particular quadrant. So that's a term for location or mapping the stars. It actually refers to the sun, Ra, the sun god. And the reason why it moves, you know, from left to right or across right it's because of the way that the sun appears to move on our planet. So, um, if this is the equator, well, actually, we shouldn't use the planet here. We just use the equator like this. This is 47 degrees of movement from, from equinox uh, to solstice to equinox back to solstice back to equinox, so kind of goes like this and makes an infinity sign. This is the sine wave of the sun. It's a 40, 47 degree span if you're, if you're looking at the equator from space, uh, dead on, even. And what happens is, um, kind of like when you look over a body of water um, and you're watching the sun rise or set, it moves 
in a right ascension way. It moves, it moves right across the sky. So one day the sun will, will rise here and it'll come up this way. And then the next day it'll be a little bit over to the right and come up this way. And then the next day it'll be a little bit to the right, come over this way. And the next day it'll be a little bit more to the right and it'll go across this 40 degree, 40, 47 degree span of the equator um, and ascend to the right. And this is Ra, right ascension. And uh, astronomers use that term all the time. Um, then let's see, what else? What else can we talk about here? Um, well, we'll go through the, the key row. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of the cross of Constantine, but I'll pull up an image of it really quick so you guys can see it. You've probably seen it in all kinds of movies. Images for the cross of Constantine. Check out these pictures for the cross of Constantine. There you go. Oh, this is a this is a graver and it's pretty hard to see. But you may have seen this in the movie Gladiator, actually Ben-Hur, in every movie that ever depicts the Roman army, they have this symbol on their shield. And um, it's a Christian symbol. And most people don't realize that Christianity is much older than Jesus Christ himself. And the 2160 year uh, zodiacal sign of Pisces in which he has been associated with. The reason why it's so much older is because it's actually referring to the sun. So Jesus Christ is referring to a, to a sun god just like Horus or Ra or Dionysus or Mithraeus um, and goes on and on and on. But anyway this sign is uh, called the Cross of Constantine because he said he saw it in the sky and um, was told through a vision that if he put it on the shields of his soldiers that he would win uh, all the wars he was in and so he did that um, I think that's pretty much a myth but anyway the point is is that this same sign is exhibited in the Vatican uh, if you look at the Vatican from the sky you'll see it's uh, the largest sundial in the world images of the Vatican from the sky Check out these pictures for the Vatican from the sky. Sorry for the pause there, you guys, but uh, as soon as this comes into focus, I'll show you this image. It's kind of loading right there. Um, if you look at this directly from the sky, you'll see that obelisk, that Egyptian obelisk, right in the middle of St. Peter's Cathedral. And um, the shadows that it makes on the ground during the equinoxes and the solstices actually make this cross. This is the cross of Constantine. It's also called the key row. And it just shows you that uh, the Vatican is worshiping the sun. Um, they're a solar cult and have been for forever since their inception. And so Christ actually refers to the sun. But back to this sign, basically you have a solstice, like so, and an equinox, like so. And then you have these midpoints as well. These are mid solstices and midpoints. And so what happens is the sun would make a shadow from this obelisk right in the middle. The shadow would point in this direction at a, stat it's a particular statue right here. Um, and this would be uh, Easter or March 21st, which is also called the East Star. That's where the word Easter comes from. It's the star that rises in the East during Primavera or the month of first fruits, which is March, March 21st, and so on and so forth. So you'd get September equinox would be here. And then you'd have the solstices here. So you'd have December 21st here, and you would have June 21st here. And then you're probably wondering what this little P looking thing is right here in this cross. It looks like a P. 
You're like, what is that? Well, what these really are, not only are they solstices, but the Greek alphabet actually created their alphabet, their symbols, the symbols for letters, based on nature. And so they actually, uh, they actually have the initials for Jesus Christ as I, which is the same as Y in the Hebrew, which is the same as J in English. Uh, so that would be referring to Jesus or J, and then they would have X for Christ. And those are the two letters in the Greek alphabet that actually make this symbol. And then the P that comes in there is actually not a P at all. So I want to make that clear. This is not a P. This is actually in reference to the sun. So you got to imagine that this is actually the sun moving this way through the zodiacal calendar of the year. And then you'll oftentimes see this sign. If you look up the symbol on the internet, you'll see um, the alpha over here, along with the Kiro sign, the cross of Constantine. You'll see this A here, and you'll see the omega, which is something like this. But oftentimes you'll see the omega written like this. I'm sure you guys have all seen this, because this is a the sign in the zodiac for when the sun crosses right here, September 21st, this is uh, the signs of Libra because the equator creates equality or scales. And so Libra is holding the scales for balance. And this is actually just a representation, it's very simple, of the sun crossing the equator. They just draw it like this. This is the sun dipping across the horizon, across the equator. Um, so this is the cross of Constantine. The Vatican uses it. Uh, it's one of the largest buildings in the world, and it's a sundial. So you got to wonder uh, what they're trying to say with that. Most Christians don't realize that Jesus was a heliognostic. He was not a Jew. He was a knower, a sun knower. So a heliognostic is one who knows the sun, knows the cycles of the sun. Um, and the key row, this symbol is also called the key row because the eye is called key in Greek. That's it. We say eye, they say key. And the row is, we say X, and they say row. So this is called key row. And key is where we get the word chi which is spelled the exact same way. Chi refers to life, energy, prana, uh, kundalini, chi in Chinese medicine, chi, ki. Um, and ro refers to the sun, just like ra. So this is the energy, literally the energy of the sun, which again is Jesus Christ, the heliognostic. So there you go. Hopefully you guys learned something about the months. Um, oh, actually one more thing. Back to this. We'll go through this very quickly. The, whoops, I got this backwards. These days right here, there is there is a reason why in the United States we, we do keep uh, the... January as the beginning of our month. Um, it's because directly opposing January 1st through 4th would be July. July 1st through 4th, which is America's independence. Um, so we've written that document, the Declaration of Independence, in, and it happens to be celebrated or official on July 4th. That's our Independence Day. But you have to wonder, What's the significance of that? The reason is there's a star that is directly in line with the Earth and the Sun on July 4th, directly in the sky overhead at midnight. It's called Sirius, and it's our sister star. It's the star in which our Sun is in a binary with. And that day, every day of the year, July 4th, is called um, Apohelium, and that means the day when the sun is furthest away from the earth, apohelium. And then directly below that, uh, opposing that six months later, would be the day of perihelium. 
and perihelion is when the sun is closest to the earth. So they chose significantly to make the day of America's independence signed in based on the zodiac, or I should say based on the celestial bodies, based on astrotheology. So this is where all of our religious content comes from. And the United States is no different. So they built this entire country. And if you do a, a zodiacal birth chart on the day in which the United States you know, was founded and gained its independence, you'll see there's all these planets in their particular places. And um, all the way down to the time. So I'll just put this underneath the camera. I know it's hard to see this, but this is the actual birth chart of the United States of America. And you can see the day, Thursday, July 4, 1776, and the time. So it's totally accurate. And you can see all the planets and the degrees in which they are in at this day. So this is not a coincidence. This was done on purpose. And I'll show you how I can prove that is that there is no coincidence at all that the particular symbol that it makes in a physical chart is the Star of David. That's amazing if you ask me. This is very rare that you'd have a perfect uh, two tetrahedrons or triangles overlaid in each other. These are Masonic symbols. Um, the Star of David is actually not a Hebrew symbol. It goes back to Egypt. Um, so there is some serious planning going on with the United States of America. So I'll just let you guys think about that. Thanks for watching.